what's up guys uh, this video is gonna be part of a, a new series of videos that will go over different ways to communicate between microcontrollers or meshes of microcontrollers uh, this video will focus on the hardware serial interface on the Arduino which is pins 0 and 1 you know the TX and RX so I've got a few requests for this and I'm going to go over exactly how to get high speed fast communication back and forth between two Arduinos with uh, pretty decent uh, data integrity meaning what we get is what we expect and so on so uh, basically what we have here is it, what we're going to call the LCD Arduino and the LED Arduino we over on the LCD Arduino we have a photoresistor which is basically a little device that uh, its resistance changes uh, based on how much light is hitting it so as I wave my hand across here you can see the brightness of the LED over here on the LED Arduino changes that's because we're sending the raw data measured on an analog pin from the photoresistor over to the LED Arduino and it's using a, P, a PWM pin to drive an LED based on what uh, how much light is hitting the photoresistor. So there's a few things going on here. We have um, the LED Arduino sending a it's sending a message over to the LCD Arduino and it's displaying that message on the LCD. Um, the LCD Arduino is sending over the raw value from this photoresistor to the LED Arduino and the LED Ar Arduino then sends the message or the uh, value back to the LCD Arduino to make sure that everything matches up. Alright, so that's kind of complicated and I made it that way on purpose just to show exactly how to get pretty decent data communication between two Arduinos. Alright, so that's pretty much all there is to the hardware. Uh, to wire this up, um, you need to tie the TX from the one Arduino to the RX of the other Arduino and then the TX from the other Arduino to the RX. So you're just tying TX to RX, RX to TX. All right, and then you also need to tie the ground pin from both Arduinos to each other as well, if you're powering them from separate voltage sources. If you're tying them both to the same voltage source, then your commons are already tied together, so it doesn't really matter. But that's kind of important, especially, um, um, yeah. Kind of important because your TX and your RX lines are going from high to low, high to low, and you need some reference to common somewhere. So anyways, that would be important if you had both Arduinos running on their own battery pack or something like that, where the commons are to each other are different. All right, so anyways, that's the, um, the hardware setup. We can jump over to the code now, and we'll get into that. All right, so... I didn't really want to make this video too long, but the code is kind of confusing and it is it, it does kind of go back and forth because we do have two Arduinos here and they are interlocked to each other, meaning they're handshaking constantly. So when data is sent, the Arduino, the other Arduino is ready to receive that data and vice versa. So everybody, both Arduinos know when data is coming and going. All right. So let's just uh Let's just take a quick peek here and we'll go line by line through this. On the left we have the LCD Arduino code and on the right we have the LED Arduino code. Alright, so uh, let's start off with just what's at the top of these. So we set up the LCD over here. We got a few variables, uh, nothing major. We are communicating at the fastest baud rate possible, which is 115-200 uh, on both of these. So it is very fast. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now on the the LED Arduino, we're using uh, pin three as the LED, the PWM pin. And the LED Arduino is actually the Arduino that starts the whole communication process. Because if you look here, over here on the LCD Arduino, let me see if I can just scroll here a little bit. Uh, we have a, the void loop. We jump down into the loop. And let's see where the loop ends, down here. And then you'll see here that the we have a little statement here. If serial.read is equal equal to dollar sign, then do all this. But if it doesn't equal that, it does nothing. 
So the LCD Arduino is sitting there waiting for data to come. So let's jump now over to the LED Arduino and see how that works. So immediately we do an analog write of the PWM pin and then we start uh, serial printing data out. All right, now you'll notice it starts with a dollar sign and I just chose that symbol uh, randomly, it could be anything. But it should be a symbol that you're not going to commonly use in your actual data stream because it's just a start of data designator. So what we do is we do a serial.print of that and as soon as this over here sees that, then it knows new data is coming. All right, and I just made a random sentence here saying I'm counting all right, and then it goes through a for loop here from I to 100, I plus plus delay one, message I is equal to serial.read. Now it's important to know that when you're sending data, it's not sending the whole sentence at once. It's sending it byte by byte by byte. And each character in here is a byte. So the letter I is a byte and it needs to be stored in its own byte location, which would be message zero. So this one's a throwaway. The dollar sign just gets eaten up, red, and then goes nowhere. So when we go four i is equal to zero, we go right into this message i uh, message of zero is equal to the letter i. Now you're going to notice a lot of delays in here on the reading end of the data transfer, and I always put a lot of delays in when I'm doing communication work because sometimes it takes time for this to enter into the Arduino and then get processed, and then by the time it's actually ready to be read. If you're trying to read it too early, you might read the dollar sign again, which we don't want. So whenever I do this, I actually have my delays way up there. I usually start off with 10 milliseconds. And then once I get everything working, I dial it back in for faster performance. And then I was able to reduce all of these to one. And I probably could go even uh, smaller than that or shorter than that by using the delay microseconds um, code. So anyways, what we got going on here is we read that now. So it's like I'm counting and then counter, which is just a variable. And I'll show you what we're doing with that in a second. Basically, counter right here is just incremented up every scan of the code. So it goes from 0 to 255 and then back to 0. And it's just a random thing I put in there just so you can see dynamic change in the code. All right. And then we send a hash symbol. So if you notice over here, as soon as if message of i is equal to hash, break, which breaks the for loop. So it jumps right out of the for loop, and i could have been equal to 10, it could have been equal to 5, it doesn't matter. And the reason I'm doing this, is because when I'm sending this sentence, I actually know exactly how long it's, it is, but I'm, I'm just showing you this as an example so you could send a sentence of any length. So we break out of the for loop, and then since we know I was stuck at wherever it was, we can we know our message length is then equal to I. Okay, now that's important um, in a second when we actually print out the second or the sentence on the LCD screen. But and yeah, I know there's probably easier ways to read message lengths or whatever that is in the serial buffer. But you know, I code like a caveman, and and I think when I um, show you other communication protocols we're gonna have to do things like this in its raw form we won't have those nice features that the hardware serial interface has um, all right and now we move along and then we do uh, we know the message length which is the sentence and then right after I print the hash symbol I print off uh, the low and the high now we'll get into what that it means in a second but it's just some byte me equaling uh, with a variable of low and a variable high. All right, so two bytes we send off and we read those right here, low, high. And I use the same variable name on both sides just to make things easy. All right, then we actually print all this data on the LCD screen. So for i is equal to zero and i is less than the message length, we print off the message in its character form. All right, meaning the ASCII characters. You're not going to get like weird numbers. You'll actually get the letters. All right, then on the we, we go to the second row, and we print the high and the low, and then we combine those two bytes into a word and print those two. And we'll get into what that means here in a second. Um, 
Then over here, I'm actually let's go back over here. So once it prints off those two, uh, it, it increments the counter and then it goes into a an infinite while loop here. Now look what happens here. While and there's a delay of one for just I could probably get rid of that, but anyways, while one and then it gets stuck and waits for serial dot read to equal a dollar sign. And if it doesn't, it just sits there and goes and delays this forever and, and does nothing. So it's the same thing over here when we were waiting for data. So it's the same thing over here. So we just got done sending data, but we're gonna wait for a dollar sign to come back before we read any data, you know. All right, so let's go back over here now because he's stuck and he's waiting for new data. So we print off everything to the LCD screen. Then we we uh, we actually read what the resistance is on that photo resistor. PWM value is equal to the analog read of pin zero. And then we do a serial dot print dollar sign. Up oh, there we go. So we pick that up. Now here's the important thing. This value here on our pin is 10 bits. So it'll read in an analog value and represent it in 10 bits. So zero to five volts is equal to zero to 1024 bits or 1023 bits, I don't know. So you'll get 1023, which is a bigger than a byte. A byte is only a number from zero to 255. So in order to actually send it across to the other Arduino, we need to convert that big number into two smaller numbers, into two bytes. And here's how you do that. So we do a serial dot print low byte of PWM value and we send it over as a character, which is just a little tip. Whenever you're sending numbers, send them over as characters. It just seems to help things a little better because if you send two numbers like this back to back, think they, the data could get garbled up and you don't know what you're reading. But if you send two letters, it's easier for it to pick it up on this side. For some reason, I don't know, just a little tip. So we send the low byte of that value and then the high byte of that value. So now we just sent over two bytes, two numbers from 0 to 255 to represent a single number from 0 to 1023, okay? And then that's exactly what we get over here. Low is equal to serial.read, which is this, and then high is equal to serial.read, all right? But then in order to use that, that value we do data in is equal to word of high to low, which is a little function that now merges two bytes into a single number. So now we brought it back in and put it back together. Um, and then down here, basically what I'm doing is um, I'm scaling that number here, this data in, which is a number from zero to 1023 into some number that'll be represented by zero to 255. That's all I'm doing there. Just so when I wave my hand across it, it writes it, uh, in a value that, you know, dims and brightens the LED. All right, that is pretty much it. Now you understand what, what we're doing. This low and high thing, though, is what we just read. Now, I said we echo this data back to the LCD Arduino, which is right up here. So this was, this data came in and landed over here, and one more down right there. But then we immediately also send it back over here and we catch it right up, where was that? Right up here and here and we print that on the LCD screen. So the data goes back and forth. Um, the main reason I did this was because I had an LCD screen over here and I knew that when I'm sending data over to it and it comes back, the same data that I expect you know, uh, it just helps kind of with troubleshooting is to always echo your data back. So, and I'm doing it just for the purposes of this video, just to explain it. Now, that's how to communicate with two Arduinos, but you might want to, um, a few things I'm not crazy about with this code is you might actually want to, I have a lot of infinite loops here. You might also want to implement your own version of a watchdog timer. Like, let's say you're stuck in this while loop for a long time, but you missed this data. It sent that out and you missed it. You might not want to use while one. You might want to use while uh, a value is less than something, a timer, start something in here. So, so that if you miss the data, you're not stuck in there and at least you can go back up and retry. So that's something you might want to implement if you're doing something like this. Um, 
with my with my circuit here, I, would, I wasn't worried about that. And, and uh, actually, it's been running now for a few hours, and it hasn't gotten uh, hicked up at all. So, all right, what else is in here that I want to explain? I think that's pretty much it. Now, once we get into the software serial, that's when this uh, is more important because these, especially with these delays, because we don't have a hardware buffer. Meaning, you know, the Arduino isn't receiving data and storing it somewhere. We need to actually be listening on the pin and catching it in real time in order to actually get that data. So, um, anyways, we'll get back to that here in a second. Oh, you know, while I got some time here, I just wanted to show you something. I doubt you'll be able to see this. But uh, I was going to show you the um, all the different functions you can do with the serial. See all these functions here? I don't know if this, this is showing up because I did a window screen capture. But anyways, all of this data here you have available when you're using the hardware serial interface. When you're using the software serial interface, you don't have all this available. But of course, um, when you're using the software serial, you can use any pin on your microcontroller and you can still use your uh, port. Oh, by the way, that's something else I wanted to show real quick. We can actually listen in and see this data coming through, and you can see it. See this? So you can see the data popping through on my software uh, or on my serial monitor. But anyways, that's just uh, a quick example on how to communicate using two Arduinos uh, reliably and very fast. So uh, hopefully that helps somebody. Thanks for watching.